The McDonnell Douglas Boeing C-17 Globemaster III is a large military transport aircraft that was developed for the United States Air Force from the 1980s to the early 1990s by McDonnell Douglas. The C-17 carries forward the name of two previous piston-engine military cargo aircraft, the Douglas C-74 Globemaster and the Douglas C-124 Globemaster II. The C-17 commonly performs tactical and strategic airlift missions. Transporting troops and cargo throughout the world, Additional roles include medical evacuation and airdrop duties. It was designed to replace the Lockheed C-141 Starlifter, and also fulfill some of the duties of the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy. Boeing, which merged with McDonnell Douglas in 1997, continued to manufacture C-17 aircraft after the merger. The transport is in service with the USAF along with Air Arms of India, the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, and the Europe-based multilateral organization Heavy Airlift Wing. The final C-17 was completed at the Long Beach, California plant and flown on 29 November 2015. In the 1970s, the U.S. Air Force began looking for a replacement for its Lockheed C-130 Hercules tactical cargo aircraft. The advanced medium stole transport competition was held, with Boeing proposing the YC-14, and McDonnell Douglas proposing the YC-15. Though both entrants exceeded specified requirements, the AMST competition was cancelled before a winner was selected. The Air Force started the CX program in November 1979 to develop a larger AMST with longer range to augment its strategic airlift. The McDonnell Douglas YC-15 design was used as the basis for the C-17. By 1980, the USAF found itself with a large fleet of aging C-141 Starlifter cargo aircraft. Compounding matters, USAF needed increased strategic airlift capabilities to fulfill its rapid deployment airlift requirements. The USAF set mission requirements and released a request for proposals for CX in October 1980. McDonnell Douglas elected to develop a new aircraft based on the YC-15. Boeing bid an enlarged three-engine version of its AMST YC-14. Lockheed submitted two designs, a C-5 base design and an enlarged C-141 design. On August 28, 1981, McDonnell Douglas was chosen to build its proposed aircraft, then designated C-17. Compared to the YC-15, the new aircraft differed in having swept wings, increased size, and more powerful engines. This would allow it to perform the work done by the C-141, and to fulfill some of the duties of the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy, freeing the C-5 fleet for outsized cargo. Alternative proposals were pursued to fill airlift needs after the CX contest. These were lengthening of C-141s into C-141BS, ordering more C-5s, continued purchases of KC-10s, and expansion of the Civil Reserve Air Fleet. Limited budgets reduced program funding, requiring a delay of four years. During this time contracts were awarded for preliminary design work and for the completion of engine certification. In December 1985, a full-scale development contract was awarded, under program manager Bob Klepper. At this time, first flight was planned for 1990. The Air Force had formed a requirement for 210 aircraft. Development problems and limited funding caused delays in the late 1980s. Criticisms were made of the developing aircraft and questions were raised about more cost-effective alternatives during this time. In April 1990, Secretary of Defense Dick Cheney reduced the order from 210 to 120 aircraft. The maiden flight of the C-17 took place on September 15, 1991 from the McDonnell Douglas's plant in Long Beach, California, about a year behind schedule. The first aircraft and five more production models participated in extensive flight testing and evaluation at Edwards Air Force Base. Two complete airframes were built for static and repeated load testing. A static test of the C-17 wing in October 1992 resulted in the wing failing at 128% of design limit load, which was below the 150% requirement. Both wings buckled rear to the front and failures occurred in stringers, spars, and ribs. Some $100 million were spent to redesign the wing structure. The wing failed at 145% during a second test in September 1993. A careful review of the test data, however, showed that the wing was not loaded correctly and did indeed meet the requirement. The C-17 received the Globemaster III name in early 1993. In late 1993, 
the Department of Defense gave the contractor two years to solve production and cost overrun problems or face termination of the contract after the delivery of the 40th aircraft. By accepting the 1993 terms, McDonnell Douglas incurred a loss of nearly one U.S. dollar. Five billion on the development phase of the program. In April 1994, the program remained over budget and did not meet weight, fuel burn, payload and range specifications. It failed several key criteria during airworthiness evaluation tests. Problems were found with the mission software, landing gear, and other areas. In May 1994, it was proposed to cut production to as few as 32 aircraft. These cuts were later rescinded. A July 1994 Government Accountability Office report revealed that Air Force and DoD studies from 1986 and 1991 state of the C-17 could use 6,400 more runways outside the U.S. than the C-5. But these studies had only considered runway dimensions, but not runway strength or load classification numbers. The C-5 has a lower LCN, but the USAF classifies both in the same broad load classification group. When considering runway dimensions and load ratings, the C-17's worldwide runway advantage over the C-5 shrank from 6,400 to 911 airfields. The report also stated current military doctrine that does not reflect the use of small, austere airfields, thus the c 17 short field capability was not considered. A January 1995 GAO report stated that the USAF originally planned to order 210 C-17s at a cost of $41.8 billion and that the 120 aircraft on order were to cost $39.5 billion based on a 1992 estimate. In March 1994, the U.S. Army decided it did not need the 60,000-pounds low-altitude parachute extraction system delivery with the C-17 and that the C-130's 42,000-pounds capability was sufficient. C-17 testing was limited to this lower weight. Airflow issues prevented the C-17 from meeting airdrop requirements. A February 1997 GAO report revealed that a C-17 with a full payload could not land on 3,000 feet wet runways, simulations suggested a distance of 5,000 feet was required. The YC-15 was transferred to a mark to be made flightworthy again for further flight tests for the C-17 program in March 1997. By September 1995, most of the prior issues were reportedly resolved and the C-17 was meeting all of its performance and reliability targets. The first USAF squadron was declared operational in January 1995. Paratroopers dropping from a C-17 during a training exercise in 2010 and 1996, the DoD ordered another 80 aircraft for a total of 120. In 1997, McDonnell Douglas merged with domestic competitor Boeing. In April 1999, Boeing offered to cut the C-17's unit price if the USAF bought 60 more. In August 2002, the order was increased to 180 aircraft. In 2007, 190 C-17s were on order for the USAF. On February 6, 2009, Boeing was awarded a $2.95 billion contract for 15 additional C-17s, increasing the total USAF fleet to 205 and extending production from August 2009 to August 2010. On April 6, 2009, U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates stated that there would be no more C-17s ordered beyond the 205 planned. However, on June 12, 2009, the House Armed Services Air and Land Forces Subcommittee added a further 17 C-17s. In 2010, Boeing reduced the production rate to 10 aircraft per year from a high of 16 per year, due to dwindling orders and to extend the production line's life while additional orders were sought. The workforce was reduced by about 1,100 through 2012. A second shift at the Long Beach plant was also eliminated. By April 2011, 230 production C 17s had been delivered, including 210 to the USAF. The C 17 prototype T 1 was retired in 2012 after use as a test bed by the USAF. In January 2010, the USAF announced the end of Boeing's performance based logistics contracts to maintain the type. On June 19, 2012, the USAF ordered its 224th and final C-17 to replace one that crashed in Alaska in July 2010. In September 2013, Boeing announced that C-17 production was starting to close down. In October 2014, the main wing spar of the 279th and last aircraft was completed. This C-17 was delivered in 2015, after which Boeing closed the Long Beach plant. Production of spare components was to continue until at least 2017. 
the C-17 is projected to be in service for several decades. In February 2014, Boeing was engaged in sales talks with five or six countries for the remaining 15 C-17s, thus Boeing decided to build 10 aircraft without confirmed buyers in anticipation of future purchases. In May 2015, the Wall Street Journal reported that Boeing expected to book a charge of under $100 million and cut 3,000 positions associated with the C-17 program. And it also suggested that Airbus lower-cost A400M Atlas has taken international sales away from the C-17. Sources, C-17 Globemaster 3 Pocket Guide, Boeing IDS Major Deliveries Cockpit of a C-17 The C-17 Globemaster 3 is a strategic transport aircraft, able to airlift cargo close to a battle area. The size and weight of U.S. mechanized firepower and equipment have grown in recent decades from increased air mobility requirements, particularly for large or heavy non-palletized outsized cargo. It has a length of 174 feet and a wingspan of 169 feet 10 inches, and uses about 8% composite materials, mostly in secondary structure and control surfaces. The C-17 is powered by four Pratt & Whitney F-117 PW100 turbofan engines, which are based on the commercial Pratt & Whitney PW2040 used on the Boeing 757. Each engine is rated at 40,400 lbf of thrust. The engine's thrust reversers direct engine exhaust air upwards and forward, reducing the chances of foreign object damage by ingestion of runway debris, and providing enough reverse thrust to back up the aircraft while taxiing. The thrust reversers can also be used in flight at idle reverse for added drag in maximum rate descents. In vortex surfing tests performed by two C-17s, up to 10% fuel savings were reported. A Royal Australian Air Force C-17 landing at Kharkiv International Airport, showing its landing gear for cargo operations the C-17 requires a crew of three, pilot, co-pilot, and loadmaster. The cargo compartment is 88 feet long by 18 feet wide by 12 feet 4 inches high. The cargo floor has rollers for palletized cargo but it can be flipped to provide a flat floor suitable for vehicles and other rolling stock. Cargo is loaded through a large aft ramp that accommodates rolling stock such as a 69-ton M1 Abrams main battle tank, other armored vehicles, trucks, and trailers, along with palletized cargo. Maximum payload of the C-17 is 170,900 pounds, and its maximum takeoff weight is 585,000 pounds. With a payload of 160,000 pounds and an initial cruise altitude of 28,000 feet, the C-17 has an unrefueled range of about 2,400 nautical miles on the first 71 aircraft and 2,800 nautical miles on all subsequent extended range models that include a sealed center wing bay as a fuel tank. Boeing informally calls these aircraft the C-17ER. The C-17's cruise speed is about 450 knots. It is designed to airdrop 102 paratroopers and their equipment. The C-17 is designed to operate from runways as short as 3,500 feet and as narrow as 90 feet. The C-17 can also operate from unpaved, unimproved runways. The thrust reversers can be used to move the aircraft backwards and reverse direction on narrow taxiways using a three-point turn. The plane is designed for 20 man-hours of maintenance per flight hour, and a 74% mission availability rate. U.S. Army paratroopers prepare to board a C-17 to fly into northern Iraq on the aircraft's first combat insertion of paratroopers, March 26, 2003. The first production C-17 was delivered to Charleston Air Force Base, South Carolina, on July 14, 1993. The first C-17 unit, the 17th Airlift Squadron, became operationally ready on January 17, 1995. The C-17 has broken 22 records for oversized payloads. The C-17 was awarded U.S. Aviation's most prestigious award, the Collier Trophy, in 1994. A congressional report on operations in Kosovo and Operation Allied Force noted one of the great success stories, was the performance of the Air Force's C-17A. The C-17 flew half of the strategic airlift missions in the operation. The type could use small airfields, easing operations, rapid turnaround times also led to efficient utilization. On March 26, 2003, Nearly 1,000 U.S. service members were parachuted into the Kurdish-controlled area of northern Iraq during Operation Northern Delay in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. This was the first combat insertion of paratroopers using the C-17. USAF C-17s fly over the Blue Ridge Mountains in the eastern U.S. in December 2005 and 2006, 
Eight C-17s were delivered to March Joint Air Reserve Base California, controlled by the Air Force Reserve Command, assigned to the 452D Air Mobility Wing and subsequently assigned to AMC's 436th Airlift Wing and its AFRC Associate Unit. The 512th Airlift Wing, at Dover Air Force Base Delaware, supplementing the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy. The Mississippi Air National Guard's 172 Airlift Group received their first of eight C-17s in 2006. In 2011, the New York Air National Guard's 105th Airlift Wing at Stewart Air National Guard Base transitioned from the C-5 to the C-17. C-17s delivered military goods during Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan, Operation Iraqi Freedom in Iraq as well as humanitarian aid missions in the immediate aftermath of the 2010 Haiti earthquake. And the 2011 Sin floods, delivering thousands of food rations, tons of medical and emergency supplies. On March 26, 2003, 15 USAF C-17s participated in the biggest combat airdrop since the United States invasion of Panama in December 1989 the nighttime airdrop of 1,000 paratroopers from the 173rd Airborne Brigade occurred over Bashar, Iraq. The airdrops of paratroopers were followed by C-17s ferrying M1 Abrams, M2 Bradleys, M113S and artillery. USAF C-17s have also been used to assist allies in their airlift requirements, including Canadian vehicles to Afghanistan in 2003 and Australian forces during the Australian-led military deployment to East Timor in 2006. In 2006, USAF C-17s flew 15 Canadian Leopard C-2 tanks from Kyrgyzstan into Kandahar in support of NATO's Afghanistan mission. In 2013, five USAF C-17s supported French operations in Mali, operating with other nations' C-17s. Since 1999, C-17s have been flying annually to Antarctica on Operation Deep Freeze in support of the U.S. Antarctic Research Program, replacing the C-141s used in prior years. The initial flight was flown by the USAF 62nd Airlift Wing. The C-17s fly round trip between Christchurch Airport and McMurdo Station around October each year and take five hours to fly each way. In 2006, the C-17 flew its first Antarctic airdrop mission, delivering 70 pounds of supplies. Subsequent airdrops continued during the four subsequent years. The U.S. presidential limousine is transported by a C-17 for long-distance trips. A C-17 accompanies the President of the United States on his visits to both domestic and foreign arrangements, consultations, and meetings. The C-17 is used to transport the Presidential Limousine Marine One and security detachments. There have been several occasions when a C-17 has been used to transport the President himself, temporarily gaining the Air Force One call sign while doing so. Debate arose over follow-on C-17 orders, Air Force having requested line shutdown while Congress attempted to reinstate production. In FY 2007, the Air Force requested $1.6 billion in response to excessive combat use on the C-17 fleet. In 2008, USAF General Arthur Licht, Commander of Air Mobility Command, indicated before a House of Representatives Subcommittee on Air and Land Forces a need to extend production to another 15 aircraft to increase the total to 205. Pending the delivery of the results of two studies in 2009, Licht observed that the production line may remain open for further C-17s to satisfy airlift requirements. The USAF eventually decided to cap its C-17 fleet at 223 aircraft. Its final delivery was on September 12, 2013. In 2015, as part of a missile defense test at Wake Island, simulated medium-range ballistic missiles were launched from C-17s against Todd Missile Defense Systems and the USS John Paul Jones. In January and February 2020, the Air Force tested palletized munitions combat expendable platforms from C-17s and C-130JS with results the Air Force considered positive. On August 15, 2021, USAF C-17-02-1109 from the 62nd Airlift Wing and 446th Airlift Wing at Joint Base Lewis MC Cord was attempting takeoff from Hamid Karzai International Airport in Kabul, Afghanistan, while crowds of people trying to escape the 2021 Taliban offensive were seen running alongside and clinging to the aircraft. The C-17 lifted off with people still holding on to the outside, and at least two died after falling from the aircraft. There were an unknown number possibly crushed and killed by the landing gear retracting, with human remains found in the landing gear stowage. 
Also that day, C-1701-0186 from the 816th Expeditionary Airlift Squadron at al Udid Air Base transported 823 Afghan citizens from Hamid Karzai International Airport on a single flight. Setting a new record for this aircraft type which was previously over 670 people during a 2013 typhoon evacuation from Tacloban, Philippines. Boeing has marketed the C-17 to many European nations including Belgium, Germany, France, Italy, Spain and the United Kingdom. The Royal Air Force has established a aim of having interoperability and some weapons and capabilities commonality with the USAF. The 1998 Strategic Defense Review identified a requirement for a strategic airlifter. The short-term strategic airlift competition commenced in September of that year, but the tender was cancelled in August 1999 with some bids identified by ministers as too expensive, including the boeing C 17 bid, and others unsuitable. The project continued, with the C-17 seen as the favourite. In the light of Airbus A400M delays, the UK Secretary of State for Defence, Jeff Hoon, announced in May 2000 that the RAF would lease four C-17s at an annual cost of £100 million from Boeing for an initial seven years with an optional two-year extension. The RAF had the option to buy or return the aircraft to Boeing. The UK committed to upgrading its C-17s in line with the USAF so that if they were returned, the USAF could adopt them. The lease agreement restricted the operational use of the C-17s, meaning that the RAF could not use them for paradrop, airdrop, rough field, low-level operations and air-to-air refueling. An RAF C-17 in flight The first C-17 was delivered to the RAF at Boeing's Long Beach facility on May 17, 2001 and flown to RAF Bryce Norton by a crew from NO. 99 Squadron. The RAF's fourth C-17 was delivered on August 24, 2001. The RAF aircraft were some of the first to take advantage of the new center wing fuel tank found in Block 13 aircraft. In RAF service, the C-17 has not been given an official service name and designation, but is referred to simply as the C-17 or C-17A Globemaster. The RAF declared itself delighted with the C-17. Although the Globemaster fleet was to be a fallback for the A400M, the Ministry of Defense announced on July 21, 2004 that they had elected to buy their four C-17s at the end of the lease, though the A400M appeared to be closer to production. The C-17 gives the RAF strategic capabilities that it would not wish to lose, for example a maximum payload of 169,500 pounds compared to the A400M's 82,000 pounds. The C-17's capabilities allow the RAF to use it as an airborne hospital for medical evacuation missions. Another C-17 was ordered in August 2006, and delivered on February 22, 2008. The four lease C-17s were to be purchased later in 2008. Because of fears that the A-400M may suffer further delays, the MOD announced in 2006 that it planned to acquire three more C-17s, for a total of eight, with delivery in 2009 to 2010. On July 26, 2007, Defense Secretary Day Brown announced that the MOD intended to order a sixth C-17 to boost operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. On December 3, 2007, the MOD announced a contract for a sixth C-17, which was received on June 11, 2008. On December 18, 2009, Boeing confirmed that the RAF had ordered a seventh C-17, which was delivered on November 16, 2010. The UK announced the purchase of its 8th C-17 in February 2012. The RAF showed interest in buying a 9th C-17 in November 2013. On January 13, 2013, the RAF deployed two C-17s of NO. 99 Squadron from RAF Bryce Norton to the French of Roe Air Base. The aircraft transported French armoured vehicles to the Malian capital of Bamako during the French intervention in Mali. In June 2015, an RAF C-17 was used to medically evacuate four victims of the 2015 Susa attacks from Tunisia. An RAF C-17 in 2010 the Royal Australian Air Force began investigating an acquisition of heavy lift aircraft for strategic transport in 2005. In late 2005 the then Minister for Defence Robert Hill stated that such aircraft were being considered due to the limited availability of strategic airlift aircraft from partner nations and air freight companies. The C-17 was considered to be favored over the A-400M as it was a proven aircraft and in production. One major RAF requirement was the ability to airlift the Army's M1 Abrams tanks, another requirement was immediate delivery. Though unstated, 
commonality with the USAF and the United Kingdom's RAF was also considered advantageous. RAF aircraft were ordered directly from the USAF production run and are identical to American C-17 even in paint scheme, the only difference being the national markings. This allowed delivery to commence within nine months of commitment to the program. On March 2, 2006, the Australian government announced the purchase of three aircraft and one option with an entry into service date of 2006. In July 2006 a fixed price contract was awarded to Boeing to deliver four C-17s for 780 million US dollars. Australia also signed a 80 US dollars. 7M contract to join the Global Virtual Fleet C-17 sustainment program and the RAF C-17s will receive the same upgrades as the USAF's fleet. The RAF took delivery of its first C-17 in a ceremony at Boeing's plant at Long Beach, California on November 28, 2006. Several days later the aircraft flew from Hickam Air Force Base, Hawaii to Defense Establishment Fairbairn, Canberra, arriving on December 4, 2006. The aircraft was formally accepted in a ceremony at Fairbairn shortly after arrival. The second aircraft was delivered to the RAF on May 11, 2007 and the third was delivered on December 18, 2007. The fourth Australian C-17 was delivered on January 19, 2008. All the Australian C-17s are operated by NO. 36 Squadron and are based at RAF Base Amberley in Queensland. Wing Commander Linda Corbold, Commander of NO. 36 Squadron RAF, training in a USAF C-17 in 2006 on April 18, 2011, Boeing announced that Australia had signed an agreement with the US government to acquire a fifth C-17 due to an increased demand for humanitarian and disaster relief missions. The aircraft was delivered to the RAF on September 14, 2011. On September 23, 2011, Australian Minister for Defence Materiel Jason Clare announced that the government was seeking information from the US about the price and delivery schedule for a sixth Globemaster. In November 2011, Australia requested a sixth C-17 through the US Foreign Military Sales Program. It was ordered in June 2012, and was delivered on November 1, 2012. In August 2014, Defence Minister David Johnston announced the intention to purchase one or two additional C-17s. On October 3, 2014, Johnston announced the government's approval to buy two C-17s at a total cost of US$770 million. The United States Congress approved the sale under the Foreign Military Sales Program. Prime Minister Tony Abbott confirmed in April 2015 that two additional aircraft were to be ordered, with both delivered by November 4, 2015. These added to the six C-17s it had as of 2015. The Canadian Forces has had a long-standing need for strategic airlift for military and humanitarian operations around the world. It had followed a pattern similar to the German Air Force in leasing Antonovs and Ilyushins for many of its requirements, including deploying the Disaster Assistance Response Team to tsunami-stricken Sri Lanka in 2005. The Canadian Forces was forced to rely entirely on leased in 124 Ruslan for a Canadian Army deployment to Haiti in 2003. A combination of leased Ruslans, Ilyushins and USAF C-17s was also used to move heavy equipment into Afghanistan. In 2002, the Canadian Forces Future Strategic Airlifter Project began to study alternatives, including long-term leasing arrangements. RCAF CC-177 on approach to CFB Trenton on July 5, 2006, the Canadian government issued a notice that it intended to negotiate directly with Boeing to procure four airlifters for the Canadian Forces Air Command. On February 1, 2007, Canada awarded a contract for four C-17s with delivery beginning in August 2007. Like Australia, Canada was granted airframes originally slated for the U.S. Air Force, to accelerate delivery. On July 23, 2007, the first Canadian C-17 made its initial flight. It was turned over to Canada on 8 of August, and participated at the Abbotsford International Airshow on 11 of August prior to arriving at its new home base at 8 Wing, CFB Trenton, Ontario on 12 of August. Its first operational mission was delivery of disaster relief to Jamaica following Hurricane Dean later that month. The second C-17 arrived at 8 Wing, CFB Trenton on October 18, 2007. The last of the initial four aircraft was delivered in April 2008. The official Canadian designation is CC-177 Globemaster III. The aircraft are assigned to 429 Transport Squadron based at CFB Trenton. On April 14, 2010, a Canadian C-17 landed for the first time at CFS Alert, 
the world's most northerly airport. Canadian Globe Masters have been deployed in support of numerous missions worldwide, including Operation Hestia after the earthquake in Haiti, providing airlift as part of Operation Mobile and support to the Canadian mission in Afghanistan. After Typhoon Haiyan hit the Philippines in 2013, Canadian C-17s established an air bridge between the two nations, deploying Canada's DART and delivering humanitarian supplies and equipment. In 2014, they supported Operation Reassurance and Operation Impact. On December 19, 2014, it was reported that Canada's Defence Department intended to purchase one more C-17. On March 30, 2015, Canada's fifth C-17 arrived at CFB Trenton. One of the strategic airlift capability C-17s at the 2006 Farnborough Air Show, a number of NATO member nations signed a letter of intent to jointly purchase and operate several C-17s within the strategic airlift capability. SAC members are Bulgaria, Estonia, Hungary, Lithuania, the Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Romania, Slovenia, the US, along with two partnership for peace countries Finland and Sweden as of 2010. The purchase was for two C-17s, and a third was contributed by the US on July 14, 2009, Boeing delivered the first C-17 under the SAC program. The second and third C-17s were delivered in September and October 2009. The SAC C-17s are based at Papa Air Base, Hungary. The heavy airlift wing is hosted by Hungary, which acts as the flag nation. The aircraft are manned in similar fashion as the NATO E-3 AWACS aircraft. The C-17 flight crew are multinational, but each mission is assigned to an individual member nation based on the SAC's annual flight hour share agreement. The NATO Airlift Management Program Office provides management and support for the heavy airlift wing. NAMPO is a part of the NATO Support Agency. In September 2014, Boeing stated that the three C-17 supporting SAC missions had achieved a readiness rate of nearly 94% over the last five years and supported over 1,000 missions. IAF's first C-17, 2013 in June 2009, the Indian Air Force selected the C-17 for its very heavy lift transport aircraft requirement to replace several types of transport aircraft. In January 2010, India requested 10 C-17s through the U.S.'s Foreign Military Sales Program. The sale was approved by Congress in June 2010. On June 23, 2010, the IAF successfully test-landed a USAF C-17 at the Gagal Airport, India to complete the IAF C-17 trials. In February 2011, the IAF and Boeing agreed terms for the order of 10 C-17s with an option for six more, the four U.S. dollars. One billion order was approved by the Indian Cabinet Committee on Security on June 6, 2011. Deliveries began in June 2013 and were to continue to 2014. In 2012, the IAF reportedly finalized plans to buy six more C-17s in its five-year plan for 2017 to 2022. However, this option is no longer available since C-17 production ended in 2015. IFC-17s the aircraft provide strategic airlift and the ability to deploy special forces, such as during national emergencies. They are operated in diverse terrain, from Himalayan air bases in North India at 13,000 feet to Indian Ocean bases in South India. The C-17s are based at Hindon Air Force Station and are operated by NO. 81 Squadron IF Skylords. The first C-17 was delivered in January 2013 for testing and training. It was officially accepted on June 11, 2013. The second C-17 was delivered on July 23, 2013 and put into service immediately. IAF Chief of Air Staff Norman A.K. Brown called it a major component in the IAF's modernization drive while taking delivery of the aircraft at Boeing's Long Beach factory. On September 2, 2013, the Skylord Squadron with three C-17s officially entered IAF service. The Skylords regularly fly missions within India, such as to high-altitude bases at Leh and Toise. The IF first used the C-17 to transport an infantry battalion's equipment to Port Blair on Andaman Islands on July 1, 2013. Foreign deployments to date include Tajikistan in August 2013, and Rwanda to support Indian peacekeepers. One C-17 was used for transporting relief materials during Cyclone Phalan. The fifth aircraft was received in November 2013. The 6th aircraft was received in July 2014. In June 2017, the U.S. Department of State approved the potential sale of one C-17 to India under a proposed $366 million U.S. foreign military sale. This aircraft, 
the last C-17 produced, increased the IAF's fleet to 11 C-17s. In March 2018, a contract was awarded for completion by August 22, 2019. Qatar Emiri Air Force C-17 Boeing delivered Qatar's first C-17 on August 11, 2009 and the second on September 10, 2009 for the Qatar Emiri Air Force. Qatar received its third C-17 in 2012, and fourth C-17 was received on December 10, 2012. In June 2013, the New York Times reported that Qatar was allegedly using its C-17s to ship weapons from Libya to the Syrian opposition during the civil war via Turkey. On June 15, 2015, it was announced at the Paris Air Show that Qatar agreed to order four additional C-17s from the five remaining white-tail C-17s to double Qatar's C-17 fleet. One Qatari C-17 bears the civilian markings of government-owned Qatar Airways, although the airplane is owned and operated by the Qatar Emiri Air Force. This is because some airports are close to airplanes with military markings. In February 2009, the United Arab Emirates Air Force agreed to purchase four C-17s. In January 2010, a contract was signed for six C-17s. In May 2011, the first C-17 was handed over and the last of the six was received in June 2012. A Kuwait Air Force C-17 in 2015 Kuwait requested the purchase of one C-17 in September 2010 and a second in April 2013 through the U.S.'s foreign military sales program. The nation ordered two C-17s, the first was delivered on February 13, 2014. In 2015, New Zealand's Minister of Defence, Jerry Brownlee was considering the purchase of two C-17s for the Royal New Zealand Air Force at an estimated cost of $600 million as a heavy air transport option. However, the New Zealand government eventually decided not to acquire any C-17 Globemasters. Map of countries that operate the C-17 Globemaster III Boeing C-17 Globemaster III of the Royal Canadian Air Force departs the 2017 Royal International Air Tattoo, RAF Fairford, England a training mission in 2007 over the Hawaiian Islands with one of Hickam AFB's first C-17 U.S. Air Force C-17. Transporting a Dutch PZH-2000 self-propelled howitzer to Afghanistan, Circa 2006 AC-17 in its aeromedical evacuation configuration U.S. Army paratroopers seated in a C-17 as it maneuvers to a drop zone for a mass attack airdrop AC-17 evacuating 823 passengers out of Kabul on August 15, 2021 C-17 on the runway at Bagram Air Base. Afghanistan, on January 30, 2009 after landing with landing gear retracted three C-17s unload supplies to help victims of Hurricane Katrina at Keesler Air Force Base Mississippi, in August 2005. AC-17 creates a visible vortex while using thrust reversal to push the aircraft backwards on a runway. AC-17 performs a combat offload of pallets in Afghanistan, June 2009. Data from Brassi's World Aircraft and Systems Directory, U.S. Air Force Fact Sheet, Boeing General Characteristics Performance Avionics Related Development Aircraft of Comparable Role, Configuration, and Error Related Lists. Thanks for watching.